Good day, YouTube. It is the 17th of April, 2024, and uh, we've done one video on this machine. This is a 2003 John Deere LT160. So uh, we've got other videos out there on the LT150 that we did, and uh, quite honestly, that one is kind of cursed. I've put four carburetors on that and still haven't got one to work well. And I uh, just ordered another one today. I this time ordered the cheapest one on eBay. I ain't kidding you. I, I don't know. We're just going to keep throwing carburetors on it until we get one that works. They're, it's just flooding out like crazy. I've even uh, cleaned up the original carburetor, put it back on, and it's doing the same thing. Anyway, uh, so this is a Kohler 16, where the 150 is a Kohler 15. Um, I, again, just did a Will It Run video on this. When I got it, I got it for free. Uh, guy was, uh, you know, done with it. Made some funny noise or something and quit. The deck is uh, is a little rough around the edges. Both the uh, front uh, anti-dive wheels are broken off. And we haven't pulled it out to really assess it yet. Um, I had picked this up, and I drove quite a distance for it. Um, because I thought I needed the motor for the 150. Um, turned out it was hydro lock because of carburetor problems I'm having. So anyway, uh, it turns out this one fired right up and run. That runs good. Doesn't have carburetor issues. Thank goodness. Um, and it's just been sitting here because, uh, you know, I like to work on these in the wintertime. Well, it's spring now. Um, I have everything sold except the 150. And... Uh, I had threatened, every time I bought a machine, I threatened to keep one. And I had that really nice one. I had all, I mean, I just had all kinds of fun John Deere's. I don't know. I just love the things. <clears throat> but uh, so far, I haven't kept anything. But what about keeping this one? Let's assess this a little bit. Still has its original tires on it. Probably doesn't have many hours on it. Oh, you know, it's got an hour meter. I wonder if it works. We should check that. The right front wheel, right front tire is uh, doesn't hold air. So we could put a tube in that. Did I order one? I'm trying to remember. It's been a minute, right? The, all the other tires are holding air. Um, the seat is in great shape. I do not have a hood for it. They are available, but, you know, I don't know. Plus, this thing really turns out to be a fancy, nice, go-into-town kind of rig, right? I don't think we're going to put a hood on it. Um at this point but we might find something down the road you know that we'll put on it the uh we're gonna today we're gonna change the oil and filter i uh observed the uh under the pri the pre-filter on the air filter we're gonna put air filter and i have all that stuff on the shelf um the safeties have been bypassed and i did spend some time checking all the uh, switches and I felt like all the switches were working. I don't know what's wrong with it. So I put the starter button back in that I had taken out. So far, I put them back in with alligator clips. Might be a dumb idea, but <laughs> that's what I've done with the intent to, when I get some time, let's dig in and try to find out what's wrong with the wiring so this thing will start with a key instead of start with the uh, starter button. But, hey, it was already there. Uh, speaking of hour meter, because I don't know that I ever looked. I don't know that the hour meter works. Let's turn the key on. See what we get. Does it work? Survey says nothing. Okay, I'll dig into that. It does have some wiring gremlins, but uh, I just fired it up. Uh, it still runs fine. I put a new battery in it. So far, that's all we've done is put a battery in it. So let's uh, get the oil draining. We'll get an air filter in it, get an oil filter, and uh, we'll get that piece of it done. We'll pull the spark plug out and have a look at it, and uh, replace it if needed. Probably just replace it anyway. And I think next we're going to pull the deck, and uh, because it does drive fine, and I actually cut a little bit of grass with it, um, the deck was slow to come up to speed, like the belt is stretched or the deck is not in its proper position or something. And I think 
the intent is to do a low dollar bring this one back to life normally i was like no holds barred and i go through them and replace everything that's not great uh, put new anti-scalp wheels on and the whole nine yards really make them nice repaint the deck etc etc um but when i have a beater <laughs> you know what i mean and the only reason i need something like this is my i have sold everything except my john deere zero turn and um maybe the zero turn isn't always the perfect machine just for like towing a trailer or rolling your lawn like i have one of those rollers the steel rollers that you fill up full of water and level out your ground or if i need a all trailer with gravel or you know whatever um might be fun to have a a beater mower so this is a little different for me to build a beater but i think we're going to um it's Kohler's are my favorite engines the Kohler commands are my favorite engines um they're easy to work on and if you take care of them they'll take care of you kind of thing so let's get the oil draining get some filters on this thing get a spark plug in it make that done and then we'll put the lift up and we'll get this deck out from under it and see about uh finishing the deck figure out what's wrong with it it sits low in the front oh yeah it's got a uh, ratchet strap holding this side up so it's got issues maybe beyond what we can see right here um yeah all right here we go all right got to get to the shed light okay so we need an oil filter oil filter all right these are Kohler's those are Briggs these are uh, pure later builds these filters get them case at a time it's the cheapest way uh, spark plugs 12 YC champion Spark plug. It's got a Denso plug in it. I pulled it out real quick. And then we need an air filter. Like that. Alright. We've done our shopping. There's the 150. I just parked it in the lean to here for now. I'm like I said, I got another carburetor coming for it. Number five, if you can believe it. It's a good machine. We can get a carburetor to work. Hopefully the next one is the right one oil's uh, still dripping out of it a little bit let's get rid of this air filter get the new one in i cleaned up the air box already Gasket's still on the cover. Oop, the notch goes there. Right. Oh, I gotta put the wing nut on first. Sometimes these are gone, so check. But you gotta hold this air filter down or it's going to leak around the bottom of it, so. so sometimes you can uh, look harder if you're buying your parts like on Amazon and you can get an air filter kit with a new nut. Again, you need to mash that gasket down there. Again, it had a Denso plug in it um, because I'm not familiar with their numbers and I didn't look it up. Um, I don't ever cross-reference a spark plug that I find in an engine 
because how do you know it was right? So I look up the spark plug correct for that engine, and I know I stock champions for Kohlers and Briggs and such, so I just double check that this is a 12YC, and it is. I have a bunch, and that's what we'll put in. I can't guarantee that was the right plug. I'm not going to bother look it up because I'm not putting one back in it. So I'm going to throw it away even though it looks good. I don't know if it's the right one or not. Okay, let's. Uh, I'm going to gap the uh, new plug and install it. I'm going to set it at 30 thousandths. All right, it's 30 thousandths. This uh, is a 5.8 socket version. Yeah. Click. Let's get that oil filter off, shall we? So it wasn't too bad in here. That filter was on pretty tight. No reason to go that crazy, guys. Soak it up. I'll get that clean. Oil filter time. Ooh, I might have to go grab a short filter. These usually give you a little more capacity. Yep. All right, clean up the cap. Oh yeah. Ta -da. All right. Should we start it up or should we put oil in it? I think we'll put some oil in it. All right, it's fired up so we can check the oil. I think I got it full, but I always got to check it and I never remember how much they take. Okay. Runs good. All right, let it settle out for a minute. All right, let's get this deck out of here. To do that, set the deck down on the on the deck on the floor, and uh, just to give you a little more room. Sometimes you got to set it up on a block of wood. Um, just give it a shot, and we'll pull these out with a pair of pliers. That one came nicely. Let me run around and do the one on the other side. All right, now we got to pull that cotter pin right there. There's no way you'll be able to see this, but uh, we got to pull that. That's your belt tightener. 
apparatus. Here we go. Well, that just went easily. All right. We should be able to slide this forward a little so we can get the belt off. And we got to take it up and over. Other side, up and over the belt guide there. Ouch. There we go. That's ready. Now we just got to move it forward and slide it off of that mount. Right. Going to the other side. Going to the other side. I got it on a block of wood over here. That'll help get it off the block of wood. Lift this out of there. Like if your theory is correct, something, I think now is a good time to lift the gestures, you know, your height all the way up out of the way so it doesn't mess with you because it's going to mess with you. Then I move in my workmate. Why do they call them workmates? Are they Australian? I don't know. Whoa, buddy, where are you going? There. Wow. Well, now we'll be able to see what we got or don't got. Probably gonna have to clean up all this years of mess. Yeah. Is that, why is that at such an angle? Hmm. Is it supposed to be or is it bent? Look at that. I believe it's bent. Probably have to straighten that. <laughs> well, you know what? Let me take some time. Clean the gunk off of here because there's no way we're going to know what we got. Until we get that all cleaned off. Okay, here we go. All right, so there's a chance that you're watching this video because you pulled the belt off and can't get it back on your LT160. I don't know about the other LTs that are all, if they're all like this one or not. So, not the expert on that. But anyway, so your engine's up there, right? So that's forward. So on the left side, we're coming the flat side around the big pulley, right? And then we're coming the V side around the left spindle. We're coming the V side around this small back pulley so it can miss all of this stuff on the way to the right spindle. Obviously V side on the spindle, back side on the small pulley, and then around the engine pulley, okay? So that's that. So uh, obviously I've been cleaning and scraping and stuff. I got a half a garbage can full of dirt and stuff and half a vacuum cleaner full of the rest of it so um yeah so now we need to put this thing up on edge and have a look at the two damage spots again i have one of the two wheels and uh yeah Is it that one sure looks like it and then i have a pattern or the other one so we'll double check see which one that is so let me turn this thing up on its edge now that we've uh, identified the belt routing um oh you know what let's look at that pulley real quick i'm just sure that that's bent shouldn't be that way so let's take that one off real quick and then we'll assess the uh, spindles in case i gotta order parts okay there's a good chance i have these pulleys no chance that i have those spindles okay Let's have a look. Guys, it's not bent. It's built that way. You can see the right side is built shorter than the left side. 
it's not out of square it's just not level on top and uh, I was thinking about straightening it but that would be wrong so nope it's the way it's supposed to be I guess okay let me uh I'm gonna hand tighten that pulley back on um, and we're gonna check for bearings and bushings and things if I've got pulleys I just will put them on um, but I gotta check the spindles too hang on well we got the deck hanging and uh, we just can't have nice things you know yeah pretty growly blades are pretty beat um i've got a sponsor that wants to work with me on some blades so i think i'll get with them and see if they want to send me a couple blades and i've got to order a couple of spindles i think i'll run out to the shed and grab some pulleys and see if i have any of this and then I'll know what I got to order then I'll sit down and order parts and uh, rest of the day probably and then tomorrow we'll go after the holes the holes I say we'll clean off the underside of this deck make another mess in the garage and uh, get those uh, anti scalp wheels in place okay so that's what we'll do. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, guys, we are back. It's the next morning. Um, I took this thing outside last night, kind of washed it a little bit. Um, I also, you know, obviously got all the uh, crud out from underneath it. I actually have a full garbage can full of junk off of this. And, of course, we're going to have to do just a full restore on this thing. I was trying to do it quick and cheap and um but uh it doesn't make any sense to do that um got these three pulleys here i went out to see what i had for pulleys and i only had one in my stash of pulleys that was um correct for it and then when i went online to get parts i actually sold these three as a set so I just ordered the three as a set. Um, they were 20 bucks. Um, and I ordered um, the two spindles. Um, what were they? 55 bucks, something like that. Anyway. Um, so all that's coming. I reached out to a potential sponsor on a pair of blades. But then I put a pair of them in my shopping cart in case that falls through. Um this deck wheel here came off of here based on the <laughs> the what's left of it fits the hole so that's good the deck the uh anti-scalp wheels in good condition we can reuse that so what i'll do here is we'll grind this out on the inside weld a piece of eighth inch on the inside we'll clean up this hole kind of pound that back straight again get all this metal cleaned up clean this up on this end and then re-weld it not only to the uh, eighth inch steel on the inside but to the deck on the outside so a nice big heavy hot uh, wide weld um, will make that uh, in great condition now i'm still contemplating what this looks like it's in a little different position than I'm kind of used to. So this deck will be square um, with this mount. So it mounts, you know, like that. So th this would be out like this and would square up as it, you know, goes forward. This is a pattern that I made my CAD drawing off of other decks that I've had to replace this a scalp wheel bracket that has been missing up this will probably be the fourth one that i've made um and some typically these fit like this okay but this isn't going to be long enough i'm pretty sure i'm gonna have to go grab a wheel so we can figure out what this pattern needs to look like um it may have to come off like that to get out far enough um for the wheel to miss the deck so um the only i gotta 
this is an LT160. I have an LT150, which is 38 inch deck version. Um, so it's not the same. And I've got my zero turn, which is also 42. But, you know, John Deere just makes so many different decks. Let's go look at those real quick. So see how this is kind of around the corner. Um, typically they're kind of up here, but uh, we're going to have some challenges here to overcome. So here's the 150, and uh, you can see how the deck wheel is mounted. I think that one's going to mount similar, but, you know, this one's uh, way farther this way. The one we're working on is kind of over here. Let's look at the zero turn real quick. And you can see this one is exactly like the pattern where it lays you know kind of at an angle and that's the way this is cut you know it's kind of like that yeah anyway and i've done many of these that's a popular deck design for them let's see about a scalp wheel here Ooh, there better be one in this box there's a whole set of them in here I'm gonna hang on. Yeah. There we go. Gives us something to look at. So we get this right. Last thing you want to do is do all the work on the deck. And then you can't get a wheel on it. That'd be funny. If not. Yeah, so somewhere out here, so this may not be too bad, but uh, you also got to figure up some kind of height on it too, so. Okay, well, I'm going to go to work uh, cleaning up these rusty areas around the hole, and uh, we'll clean it up on the inside. We'll fit a piece of eighth inch and uh, get that welded in, and we'll figure out how to weld these things on. We got to strip this deck. So we can clean it up and paint it um, while parts are coming in. We got some time to do that, a couple days, no doubt. Okay, here we go. All right, I'm back. I had to go to a meeting and I'm back. It's afternoon now. Um, we're pulling these spindles out of here, but you know, these nuts are just rusted on like nothing. And uh, we're gonna have to cut them out of here. So I've started grinding on them just basically splitting the nut and the bolt um, and trying very hard not to put a grind mark on the deck itself. These areas are weak enough as it is. No reason to do any more damage to it. So let's grind on this a little more, see if we can get this one off and I'll get the rest of them out of here. Not doing any damage. See if we can knock this out with a cold chisel. Got the nut busted off. Kind of spread the bolt out in the process. But anyway, get the drill. I'll get that out of there. We'll get the rest of them out of there. And uh, then we'll go about fixing the dents, shall we? All right. You see, I got those cut as well. Yeah, that's how we do it. Here we go. Okay, um, we got the uh, the spindles all taken out. Um, I got these 
broken areas all prepped ground all the paint the rust straighten them up best we could i made some eighth inch plates um out of i think that's three inch wide flat stock there got that all ready to weld in as well as the one over here yep so uh let's start welding this thing in right there and we can uh, start putting the wheels back on this thing. Finish this up. All right, we got that welded. We got that one welded. Now then, let's get this thing flipped around. We'll clean up that wheel and bracket. There it is. Yeah. And we'll get that uh, welded back on. The idea when we weld this back on is that we weld it to the plate and to the deck all in one shot. You know what I mean? All right. Here we go. I got that bracket prepared. Oh, you can see I've got a slot there where I can weld to that eighth inch steel and also to the deck at the same time all right i'm just going to get in there and weld it and i'll show you what we got all right. we got her stuck together like glue that's going nowhere absolutely nowhere that's at least twice as strong as it ever was probably three times because it wasn't ever fully welded from the factory and now we got to build this one so oh i'll uh, start with my template i'll compare it to that one over there it's about bolt positionings and stuff i might drill it a little different than my template says um again this was based on a uh like a 100 series like an l110 or something Oops, probably covering a hole there um so anyway, I'll compare the two. It don't have to be perfect or anything. I'll have to decide whether I lay this like that and weld it or if I butt weld it. Um, either way is probably fine. But Okay, I'll go to work on this. I'll bring you back when I got something interesting to show you. All right, I took this plate. I kind of traced out my cardboard pattern my CAD design right cardboard aided drafting got it took death wheel cut this out put a bend in it and we're gonna put it right there I forgot to drill the holes on a drill press it'd be easier but I spent so much time getting it aligned so <laughs> I'll drill it in place so anyway I've got that thing sitting there I'm gonna get it tacked and then we're gonna get it welded then we're going to call it a day, and we'll pick up on this project tomorrow. So a lot of parts are coming, so tomorrow will be clean up um, and get it uh, the rust treated and uh, maybe even get some paint on it by the end of the day. And then hopefully parts start showing up. So 
let's get this welded on so we can go home. All right, it is welded on and is uh, cooling off and will be ready in the morning. We'll drill out the holes for the deck wheels and, uh, and we'll start cleaning this bad boy up. We'll treat the rust and uh, probably get it painted tomorrow. Okay, all right guys, see you tomorrow. Just like that it is the next day i've been here a little while i don't know where you guys have been but uh i've got this thing all prepped and ready uh to do the rust converter stuff and i use a rust sergeant you can google that it's actually uh sold here in southern oregon and uh i've been using it for years not sponsored by them but uh it's good stuff. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff out there just as good, but I like this so. And I bought like four gallons of it back in the day, and I haven't used half of the first gallon yet. Um, I just put a little bit in the bottom of this cup. That's going to be plenty enough, probably, to do this whole thing. And uh, this isn't for use on the painted surface. It's for use on the rusty surface, okay? And it goes a long way, so um, don't get too much of it on the painted surface because, again, that's not what it's for. So we're going to run around here and get all this rusty stuff done. It's going to dry um, like a black primer. This will go pretty quick, so uh, I'll get this done and run out and find something better to do for a little while and then we'll come back and paint this today okay all right see you back here in a little bit all right it is done uh, we're gonna let it sit in here and dry for oh half an hour hour or so It'll probably be ready in about a half hour because it's a nice sunny dry day with this little cool out this morning. Um, so we'll probably give it about an hour and then we'll come back in. We've got a partial gallon of Rust-Oleum Safety Yellow and uh, we're going to paint it. And uh, if it needs a second coat or something, uh, we probably can get a second coat in later today, let it dry all night. Um, parts aren't all going to be here till sometime on Wednesday today. Is Friday so uh, is what it is um, it can just kind of sit here ready to go and uh, we'll do that all right guys catch you back a little bit all right, first coats on yep it's a little rough it'd be fun to you know sandblast these and spray them out and all that stuff but you know what <laughs> it's a lawnmower so if you love your mower or you're restoring it I get it but uh, yeah, this was a freebie. And uh, again, Rust-Oleum, safety yellow, just with a brush. After a wire brush, a Scotch-Brite pad, and wipe it down with acetone. So, looks better in the pictures than it does in real life, gotta tell you. Gotta be honest. But uh, I think uh, because it's not quite noon, that we'll be able to get a second coat on this. Plus, it's a nice warm day, it should dry pretty good. So, we can get a second coat on it today, let it dry tonight then uh, we'll be ready when parts arrive you know what i mean all right we'll be back all right i've been kind of working on the lt160 a little bit it's fast forward to what is today like the 23rd of april it's a tuesday and uh had some rust under the seat so i scraped it all off and you know how that goes you start you know with a little bitty spot of rust and the next thing you know it it was under the paint everywhere i don't know how come John Deere couldn't figure out how to like put a primer on or something to keep that from happening. But it's for years, um, these things just do that. So I treated the rust, you know, brushed it all with a wire brush, treated the rust, primed it with rust oleum, and painted it with uh, uh, John Deere green. So let's put the seat back on and uh, get this out because uh, I want to. I got the. I still got the LT150 and. Uh, I've been playing musical carburetors on that thing for months, and I just got another one. So I'm going to 
put the seat back on, get this off the lift, put the 150 on. We'll do another video and swap a carb on the 150 and try and get that uh, finished and uh, sold before the season's gone so we can buy more toys. All right, here we go. All right, we got the 160 out in the sun. I'll put it in the tractor shed. Uh, I get the 150 out of here. So um, I'm going to uh, stop this video here. We'll reconvene. Uh, well, I got some more parts that should be coming in today and tomorrow. We'll get that other deck done. So let's go work on this one. Here we go. Guys, this is the deck for the LT160. Um, and all the parts are here. I just had some other projects come in. And some other things going on. And uh, I've kind of been working on that other stuff. So I'm going to end this video here. Um, and get it uh, uploaded and scheduled. And uh, we'll get back on this thing. Finish up this deck. And a couple of little surprises. And uh, make this mower usable and i think i'm going to hang on to it just keep it around for little things we'll see how that goes you know how that goes somebody will wander along and need it and i'll sell it to them of course but anyway i'm not going to actively sell it so guys thanks for watching the video please give it a thumbs up on the way out and we'll catch you on the next one